Have you ever built a really tall tower out of blocks? You probably found that the taller the tower, the more wobbly it got, but that a shorter tower was actually pretty sturdy. Over the last few weeks, we've been talking about humility versus pride. Pride is when we think of ourselves as better than others, or we trust in ourselves more than we trust in God. Humility is the opposite of those things. Humility is not thinking that we're better than others or not believing that we're better than ourselves. Humility means keeping our trust in God and not in our own strength. We've been talking about King Saul, who was the first king of God's people, the nation of Israel. Now, before Saul was king, he was humble. In fact, he was so humble that when they went to make him king, he hid. He didn't think he was better than anybody else. When Saul was humble, God was able to do great things with him. But as Saul did great things, he began to believe that his achievements were his own doing. And as he grew more and more proud of himself, he forgot God. He forgot that it was God who gave him those successes in the first place. And this even led him to disobey God's commands. Remember Proverbs 16 18 says, pride goes before a fall. Pride will always lead us to disobedience and eventually destruction. Now, Saul wasn't a tower, but towers help us think about how success affects our lives. The more successful we become is like a taller tower. It becomes harder for us to remain humble. And it's not that success is bad. It's just that we have to work harder to give glory and honor to God so we don't try to take that glory and honor for ourselves, which is what causes us to become proud. The taller the tower, the easier it falls. And in the same way, the more successful we are, the easier it is to become proud. But just like a tall tower will always fall, a proud heart will always fall too. But what does fall mean? Does it mean it will actually fall over? No, it doesn't mean that. It means sin. Fall is another word for sin. Pride will always lead us to sin against God. It always leads us to disobedience and that always leads to our downfall or our destruction. In Saul's life, he was so proud of the things he accomplished, he began to forget that it was God who accomplished those things through him, not Saul accomplishing them all by himself. And there's a story in the Bible about an actual tower. You heard about that earlier. The Tower of Babel is what we call it. You see, there was a time on earth when everyone spoke the same language. When God created the earth and he made people, he gave us the command to spread out and have big families and fill the earth. But instead, humans chose to stay together. And that was the first act of disobedience when we see that the people of Babel chose a valley and they all stayed in that valley. And they thought, ooh, you know what we should do? We should build a tower. We should build a tower that's so tall, it'll be like nothing anyone has ever seen. It'll reach all the way up to the heavens and then we'll be famous and people will want to be just like us. So they disobeyed God. They became full of pride and selfishness. And you heard in our Bible story what happens next. God changed the language of every person so that no one could understand each other. And he put a stop to the building of the tower. So all of the proud, selfish plans that the people had created, God stopped. Because what does the Bible say in our memory verse this month? God opposes the proud. We need to be filled with humility and not pride. We need to choose to listen to God and his word. We need to trust that God knows best. We need to obey the leaders, the teachers, the parents that God has put into our lives. And when we decide because of pride to do it our own way or that we know better, it will always lead to our hurt or our embarrassment or our failure. Imagine with me that this little balloon is Saul. He started out humble. He didn't think of himself as big. He was little in his own eyes. But over time, he had great successes. And he began to store those things up in his heart and tell himself about how great he was. In fact, maybe people complimented him and they told him great things about him. And he tucked those compliments away and he reminded himself of those things. Instead of giving honor to God, he honored himself by remembering all those things he was really good at. It might sound like this. Oh, Saul, you're so strong and handsome. Oh, Saul, you're such a good leader. Wow, Saul, no one can direct an army like you can. Hey Saul, nice robes. I really like your horses too. <sighs> Saul, there has never been a king like you and you'll be the best king we've ever had. We'll never have another king like you. <sighs> oh Saul, you're so good at this. You don't need God. 
What would happen if we kept going? Over and over, Saul would hear good things that he did or he'd think of good things that he did. And instead of saying, thank you God for these successes, he stored them up and his head became huge. Did his head really become huge? No, that's just a word picture we use to talk about someone who has pride in their heart. Their head is too big. So Saul stored up all those compliments and all of his successes inside of him instead of giving them to God. And over time, what's going to happen to this balloon? It's going to. Now, compliments themselves aren't a bad thing. But if we start to believe that we can do things better than others, or that we know better than someone who actually does know better, or that we know better than God, we trust in ourselves and our own strength instead of in God and in his power and in his promises, that is what creates a prideful heart or a big head in our own lives. So the answer to this is to stay humble. How do we stay humble? Well, first things first, you have to read God's word. God's word is so important for us understanding who God is and who we are. And so as we read God's word, we are hearing directly from him. And when we hear God's word, we need to obey it. We need to do the things God's word tells us to do. And when we have successes or when people tell us about successes they see in our lives, the things we're good at or what we're doing well, we need to give those things to God and say, thank you God for making me good at this. Or thank you God that you helped me through this. It's wonderful to receive compliments, but if we store them up inside of our hearts, we become prideful. But if we give them to God as a praise, then we remain humble. Remember, God is pleased with a humble heart. So if we stay humble, God can use us to do great things and something really cool. The Bible says, James chapter 4, verse 10, the Bible says this, Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up in honor. When we humble ourselves before God and we don't lift ourselves up in prideful ways, God will lift us up in honor. And the honor that God can bring into our lives is always better than the honor that we will try to grab for ourselves. So let's take a moment right now and pray and ask God to help us spot pride in our lives and to have humble hearts. Would you pray with me? God, thank you that you love us so much that you don't want us to live with prideful, disobedient hearts. God, would you help us to spot areas of pride in our own hearts? Help us to be humble before you. Help us to see the things that we are good at and the things that we are successful at and to honor you and praise you for those things. In your name, amen. Okay, friends, it's time to pause and pray. I'm gonna give you a couple of things to think about, and I want you to pause this video, talk to Jesus in your heart. Proverbs 13, 10 says, pride leads to arguments. Those who take advice are wise. What do you think being humble has to do with taking advice? Think of a time when someone tried to give you advice or instruction, and you didn't do what they said. Can you see pride in that situation? Ask God to help you have a humble heart that's willing to take instruction or follow the advice of a wiser person. Let's memorize God's word together. 1 Peter 5.5 5 says, Clothe yourselves with humility toward one another, because God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Can you say that with me? Clothe yourselves with humility toward one another, because God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. 1 Peter 5.5 5. Let's hide some words and see if we can remember them. Clothe yourselves with humility toward one another, because God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. 1 Peter 5.5 5. Ready to make it harder? Clothe yourselves with humility toward one another, because God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. 1 Peter 5.5 5. Hmm, that's not hard enough. Let's hide some more. Clothe yourselves with humility toward one another, because God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. 1 Peter 5.5 5. Now it's getting tougher. Clothe yourselves with humility toward one another, 
because God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. 1 Peter 5.5. 5. Let's hide some more. Clothe yourselves with humility toward one another, because God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. 1 Peter 5.5. 5. Ready to make it harder? Clothe yourselves with humility toward one another, because God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. 1 Peter 5.5. 5. All right, I think we almost have it. Clothe yourselves with humility toward one another, because God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. 1 Peter 5.5. 5. Ready to try it with no words at all? Clothe yourselves with humility toward one another, because God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. 1 Peter 5.5. 5. That's tough. Can you do it without me? Give it a try. Don't forget, we have fun stuff happening throughout the week on our Facebook page. Ask your grown-up to check in.